Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for six things that we learned from Chelsea 4, Juventus 0 in the Champions League. An emphatic night for Chelsea, an incredibly exciting evening at Stamford Bridge. Cobham is on fire, Chelsea are on fire and I've got a feeling this video could be a little bit of fire. So if you are not yet subscribed to the George Benson Football Channel then I would love to ask you to do so. And if you can also hit the like button on today's video, then I will be a very happy man indeed. Chelsea have blown the old lady all the way back to Turin tonight. It was a cold night at Stamford Bridge. Not that I know because I'm here in Bali under my AC. But I heard it was cold. But Chelsea were absolutely on heat tonight. We were doing something that we've seen consistently throughout this entire season. But it, there was just something special about this game tonight. And for me... I feel as though this could be a watershed game in our season for many different reasons. I think in the grander context of the past 20 years, the fact that the first three goals we scored were all scored by Cobham graduates from the academy isn't a surprise, but at the same time, it is one of those moments where you look at the opponent, it's Juventus, it's in the Champions League, Chelsea are trying to do what no English club has done for a very, very long time, and that is retain a European title. It will give so much confidence to the academy. Roman Abramovich, he wasn't at the game tonight, but he was in London for the past couple of weeks. Or, well, he was there for a little bit of time because he got some kind of visa through. Not the one that he wants, but it's a long story. Something to do with Israel. Yeah, Chelsea were just on a different planet tonight. Stamford Bridge was going mad. I'm watching the post-match reaction right now behind you guys in the camera. You can see everybody in the stadium is buzzing about this one. And I think, again, Chelsea now have winning the Champions League group, if we bring it back to the, the mathematics of the table, 4-0, we're now dominating goal difference, we're top of the group, we've got to go to Zenit, and all we need to do in St. Petersburg is better the result of Juventus, which I certainly believe, after a performance like that, we can certainly do so. However, as much as it was a huge 4-0 win, we got to remember that the polarities in football are always there to kind of give us a little slap in the face when we're enjoying ourselves a little bit too much, and with the injuries to N'Golo Kante and also Ben Chilwell, we just got to hope that both of those players recover. Ben Chilwell, it did look quite serious. He took that knee knock and then when he goes, he hobbles off the pitch. He can't put any weight down on that leg. We've just got to hope that when we find out more about this one tomorrow, he's probably going to go under a scan at Cobham, make sure everything is okay or as good as it can be. And it doesn't look like either of those players, if Kante hobbled down the tunnel straight away too, it's probably likely that both will miss the game against Manchester United. So polarities in football, come and give us a little slap. Remind us that not everything is going to be perfect. However, to keep things positive here today on GBFC, which is what I always try to do, we've really got to talk about a lot of positives today within our performance. We were amazing. We nullified Chiesa. We had Alvaro Morata come back to Stamford Bridge, get booed pretty much the entirety of the game. Only one real chance that I can remember for Juve was late on in the match where, again, Edouard Mendy makes a stunning save to tip the ball over the crossbar from Weston McKennie. We, we made Juventus look very, very average. Yes, they didn't have a full-strength squad, but... Overall, I just think Chelsea today exuded class. We are the European champions and with a performance like this one, there's absolutely no reason in my mind why we can't go and do it again. We begin with box number one. I really could not decide if I wanted to give a blue box or not. I was thinking of giving one and then I thought, you know what, we're going to keep six greens today because 4-0 Juve at home is sensational. We begin with Trevor Chalobah, who opened the scoring tonight for Chelsea. And once again, we'll talk about the goal, of course. But defensively, I mentioned in my preview, I thought Azpilicueta would start this game. Trevor Chalobah against Juventus. What more can we ask for from this bloke? You know, he is absolutely massive at the back. Thiago Silva, Rudiger, they trust him with his life. So does Edouard Mendy, Rhys James, Chilwell. Everybody has faith in Chalobah too. Jorginho, Kante coming back, receiving the ball from him. But the goal, let's talk about the goal. It's a wonderful finish. It's not an easy one, you know, because Chelsea, you could say, got a little bit lucky from VAR. There was a potential Rudiger handball. I don't think it is. I don't think Bonucci is even involved in that position. He's on the floor, but I think the goal should stand. And I'm glad it does because Trevor Chalobah gets his head over the ball, hits it with power. Wojciech Chesney almost got, well, got a hand to it, but he couldn't keep it out. It's a massive, massive strike. Set the tone for Chelsea. You came out the blocks today. 
incredibly quickly, be it in the first half and the second half. We sometimes see from Chelsea that we come out in the first half, we're a little bit slow to start with, or we're quick and then we lose intensity. We lose tempo, second half, team talk. We come out same again. There wasn't a single change in the intensity and tempo of Chelsea's approach today. Throughout the entire 90 minutes, we were flawless. We were perfect with that. Trevor Chalaber opened the score in, and I thought it was a massive, massive performance again from Trev, proving that even against the smaller Premier League teams, your Palaces, your Southamptons, you can get goals there. But to score against Juventus in the Champions League, he's recently been given a five-year contract. Trevor Chalaber is the real deal. And if Southgate, you've got a new contract, mate. If you don't call Big Trev up for your next international squad, then I'm going to be, well, I don't have your number, but I'm going to try my best to source it and uh, give you a little buzz to let you know you're making a slight mistake. We move into box number two, and I've kind of gone chronologically in this video today. So box number two is for Thiago Silva. That block that he made when it's 1-0... Alvaro Morata dinks it over the top of Mendy. Mendy, you could say he got caught out for a rare occasion, but when you've got the evergreen 37-year-old Thiago Silva as your centre-back through the middle, you just know that you got cover. You can make an odd mistake. You can let an ex-Chelsea striker chip it over the top of your, of your bonce, and Thiago Silva is going to make a phenomenal goal-line clearance. And the reason... I gave Thiago Silva this box it isn't just because of that clearance. I thought all round again, he absolutely bossed the Juventus forward line. But at that moment, when the game was 1-0 to Chelsea, if it goes 1-1, it changes the whole complexity of what this game could have been. Juventus could have smelt a bit of blood. Chelsea could have been a bit shaken by conceding a goal. Juve away fans, they start to get involved. But no, Thiago Silva shuts the door on Alvaro Morata, shuts the door on Juventus. And again, it's another clean sheet for Chelsea. Thiago Silva through the middle, simply incredible. We move into box number three. And the plaudits that I want to give Rhys James, I'm just not going to hold them back anymore. The best wingback in world football at this moment in time. Rhys James is, in my opinion, the complete player. If you want to look at an all-rounded quality player who is strong, who is defensively capable, who can go forward and attack and is positionally superb, then you don't look any further in world football right now than Rhys James. I think he is simply the best. People can argue all day long about Trent Alexander-Arnold. It's a bit like Messi and Ronaldo at the moment, you know, with these two, because they're both incredible players and you could argue one either way. But for me, I've got blue tinted glasses on. I wake up with them in the morning, I go to bed with them at night and Rhys James is on a different planet. That finish is superb. The way he chests it down, you know, it's not It's not like it's the bottom of his chest. It's up here. He controls it and then absolutely leathers it past Chesney into the back of the net. Chelsea off to a flyer at the beginning of the second half and Reese again defensively against one of the best teams in Europe. Juventus are no joke. They've won how many titles in a row in Italy? They're a serious, serious team. Been in Champions League finals too only for the brilliance of Gareth Bale to deny them. It, it was amazing today from Rhys James. I thought he was the best player on the pitch. I probably would have given in the blue box if I couldn't decide if I wanted to give it to somebody else or not. But now I'm here making this video. Rhys James was by far the best player, in my humble opinion. We move into box number four. It's a green for Callum Hudson-Odoi. Scored the third goal. And that kind of five-minute passage of play was electrifying from Chelsea. I was sat with my flipping dog. He was asleep. He actually managed to get in the bed, which is a little bit odd, I know. But he did. And he even woke up when that went in because I started going nuts at 4.30 in the morning. Callum Hudson-Odoi tonight, I thought was excellent. I think I will say one thing, and I think he does need to be a little bit better with his final decision-making consistently. I know I talk a lot about consistency with Chelsea players, but when you see the ceiling that some of these players have, You've got to start making sure that that is consistent. He finishes it brilliantly for the third goal. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, incredible work in the build-up to that. The footwork, I don't even think I saw until I saw the replay just how good that intricacy was. And then he gives it to Callum. Callum finishes it off. And Callum was an absolute thorn in the side of Cuadrado the whole night, getting him around the back of him, causing fouls, creating opportunities. And yeah, like I said, the only thing I'd want a bit more of is decision-making with final passes and final shooting. But once again, seven starts in a row for Callum Hudson-Odoi. He is fully making this Chelsea position his very own. Cobham on fire. 
we move into box number five, Jorginho. I think in terms of the overarching way that Chelsea controlled this game, as it very usually is when Jorginho is at his very best, he absolutely allowed the transition for everything that we did on the field to be fluid, to be cohesive. And I think it was a very smart performance from Jorginho tonight. He was on the ball. There was that little moment I really liked. It's very small, but in the first half, he had that little back heel to Reese James that kind of just showed how positionally aware everybody is in this Chelsea team. The reason we're champions of Europe, the reason we're top of the Champions League group in a quarterfinal of the League Cup, top of the Premier League, is because everybody works on the same hymn sheet at this Chelsea Football Club right now. That is largely thanks to Thomas Tuchel, but it's also very much down to a player like Jorginho who controls that engine room so perfectly for Chelsea. And I want to finish box number six today by dedicating the box to Cobham, the best academy in the world. The first three Chelsea goals all scored by academy graduates. Trevor Chalaber, Reese James and Callum hudson Adoy. We cannot forget that Timo Werner scored the fourth goal in the box, tapping it in to absolutely put the cherry on top of the cake, or as I always like to say, that little orange slice that just looks like a sugar lump. I absolutely love those candies on top of cakes. I don't really like cakes that much, but Cobham, what an incredible concoction of sweetness that place is. We have got so many reasons to be happy with this because not only is it amazing for the, the immediate with the academy graduates that we've got, that we have this heartfelt affiliation to because they know Chelsea the same way you or I do, not like a player who might just arrive after a year or six months. You know, we have chosen Chelsea as our club. We love it. They've had it as their club too from being kids, being ball boys, now being in the first team, absolutely dominating one of European's giants in Juventus as Champions League winners. It is just a thing to behold. And I think the other reason, again, why it could be a watershed moment is because you always need iconic games and iconic moments to fuel that idea again with the current academy boys who are young, like these players once were. An example of why they will succeed in their careers, why Cobham is the best place to be, is showing them the highlights for this game, which is why I think this is a massive moment for Chelsea. I think it's watershed in the season moment because... Now we're top of the group. It's in our hands. We can get a favourable draw. We can go on and win this bloody trophy again. I fully believe that. But again, this video of the highlights of this game will be played for many years down in Cobham because it is an absolute iconic showing of just how great these Chelsea boys are and just how it is possible to make it in such a gargantuan institution like Chelsea Football Club and dominate Europe's very best. But anyway, this has been a very fun six things we learned. Chelsea 4, Juventus nil. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you are new. Going to upload this as soon as I possibly can for you all. Check out today's earlier videos too. I had a news video drop and I'll catch you guys later. Come on, you blues.